Not long ago, I met Earl Crawley. Hey, how you doing? But everyone here calls him Mr. Earl. <laughs> He's worked as an attendant at this parking lot in Baltimore for 44 years. So you really think it's going to improve the gas? Funny thing, money. though, everyone was asking Mr. Earl about money. Nickel and dime, nickel and dime. That's right. Is that booth his pulpit where he's preaching the gospel of investing? Sure is. Okay. He makes my day every time I see him. Oh, come on now. Seriously. Investing? How you like that gold now? 670. Earl told me he's never made more than $12 an hour. Never earned more than $20,000 a year. How you doing? So how could he know something about corporate profits? I had to pry. So Earl, what's your net worth? A half a million. Half a million dollars? Yeah. From working here. Working here. That's amazing. A last statement. And there it is in his statements. Over a half a million dollars net worth on a parking lot wage. Now Mr. Earl had my full attention. How did he do it? Stop working so hard and let the money work for you. Earl's first lesson came at age 13. His mother had him working the fruit stalls to help pay the family bills. He got to keep just a few quarters for himself. From the time my mother started taking money, taking my money that I earned at Alexa the market, that uh, it wasn't uh, money just to be thrown away. It was there to be used. Economics aside, Earl had another obstacle to overcome. Is, uh, he tells me he's dyslexic. Back in the 50s, that meant settling for a life of low-wage manual labor jobs. So Earl figured he'd better sock away what little money he was making. It was just a dollar here and a dollar there, starting with saving stamps, and that led to savings bonds. At 26, he got married. And by the late 60s, Earl was feeding three children on a meager $80 a week. It was tough, but because we had to sacrifice a lot. And the budget only got tighter when Earl and Beverly opted to send their kids to Catholic school instead of public school, which was free. Earl took extra jobs to pay the tuition, and you better believe he made every penny count. Elementary school, I would ask for lunch money, and he would give me a dollar, and lunch was 85 cents, and he would reply before I walked out the door, I want my change. <laughs> As the years rolled by, Earl kept saving what seemed like meaningless amounts. He started investing $25 each month into a mutual fund and did that consistently for 15 years. By the late 70s, his net worth was $25,000. Later, as, we, as the children got older, he decided to um, play, I call it play the stock market. And he bought one share, and well, the rest is history. <laughs> he bought stock in blue chips like IBM and Coca-Cola that paid dividends and... Instead of uh, taking the dividends and pocketing it, let it set or let it reinvest itself and they increased my shares. And the more shares I had, the more dividend I had, eventually the more money I had down the road. So where did this so-called slow learner learn so much about mutual funds and blue chips and dividend reinvestment plans? It all comes back to that parking lot. And this is my favorite part of Earl's story. You see, his lot is smack dab in the middle of a financial district where he picked the brains of brokers and bankers and lawyers for their financial advice. Well, you got any advice for me today in the markets? No, I'm just trying to find out something from you. Oh, all right. Talk to everybody and listen to uh, advice that everybody give me and take it from there. Earl, why don't we take a look at what you've got in the portfolio now. And see. Earl had trouble reading, so instead, he listened. He believed in the power of compound interest and stocks for the long haul, which brings us back to the present. Today, Earl's stock portfolio alone is worth more than half a million dollars. And yes, his house is paid for. And no, he doesn't carry any credit card debt. He's somebody to emulate not only as an investor, but as an individual and in how to live your life and, and uh, make the best of, of what the Lord gave you. Now. Earl is paying it forward. Here comes Brenda. He's gifting Thomas shares Brenda. from his portfolio to people like Brenda Thomas, who never dreamed they could have enough money to invest. And that was Coca-Cola. Because you told me to reinvest uh, my dividends, I now have 77 shares. Oh, I'm excited about it. 
I wouldn't have I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for Mr. Earl. And it, he made it so easy. If you don't have the money for the And whole not shit, only is he gifting shares to a local no church, he's starting an investment club there to get everyone investing. Our goal is every member of the church will own stock and then we're going they're going to transfer into their family members. So starting here, it's just gonna blow up. It, it makes me feel good to see someone actually uh, going on and, and took my advice and went on and did it. And that's a, uh, really a good feeling. So from his little green shack, Earl is helping others and preaching the gospel yeah, of investments. And at the end of my day with Mr. Earl, he told me his good fortune happened not in spite of, but because of his disability. I always used to say that I must have been the dumbest thing in school or the dumbest thing to uh, couldn't learn. But God gave me the gift to, uh, to um, listen and act behind it. And uh, it's one of the best things I've ever had to me.